The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman. My pleasure to be here on this 11th day of December, uh, Wednesday. And uh, this is going to be so interesting because um, we're looking at some divergences in the monthly charts of the key indexes, and they still have not made new all-time highs? Will the Fed announcement after 2 o'clock and 2.30 uh, when uh, Powell gets to speak, will that be a game changer? Let me just go through what I'm looking at here. You see this arch formation? You see this little circle here? That's a gap down and a gap up. So this is an island reversal, meaning that the, the body of land over there is up in the higher area, and there was a gap down. A little island was made because it, it went right, the price went right back to the main land. Um, so will they will they get filled? Well, we've got two gaps. <clears throat> we've got a gap from the close, the high of the of the fifth of December in the Dow of twenty seven thousand seven forty five, and the very next day gaps up. Remember that was that Friday, boom, up in the air. Twenty seven thousand eight thirty nine was the low. So far, the low today in the Dow is twenty seven thousand eight hundred one. Will that be filled? Well. I suspect that the Dow is being weighted down because of Boeing, that it would be much more in line. Look, Boeing is down four. It was down much more earlier on at 343. Home Depot was down quite a bit. Yep, it's still down 4.33 at 211. Uh, these are big stocks. Uh, the only thing about Home Depot that I've had, and I've spent a lot of time going through it, I can't make This is one of the very few times uh, when I say that, I really mean one of the very few times that I can recall ever that a major top was made in a, a significant company. This is not just an, um, an IPO or something that doesn't have the volume or doesn't have the panache or the, the covering that something like a Home Depot has, makes an all-time high and fails at a peak C in the weekly chart. Yeah, yeah it's sure it happens. And I haven't done every single chart, but with, for the thousands of charts that I've done, tens of thousands of charts, and probably hundreds of thousands <laughs> with a Chapman Wave notation. It is rare to go to a peak C and then break down below the starting point, and that starting point would have to be um, on the week of the 16th of August at 199.05. So that's about another 12, 13 points down. If it, if it does that, um, then it breaks, and that's a minus C minus, very unusual. And then the monthly chart has made a peak C. I, there I could make an excuse to say, yep, it could be an alternate count, um, F slash C. Don't want to make it complicated, but it's not technical Friday, it's Wednesday. So I just wanted to say Home Depot is part of the responsibility, while the Dow is somewhat weaker than the S&P. But the S&P is not doing great. It's up 2.5. Um, let me show you the S&P right now. <clears throat> it's gone sideways. There's an island re reverse as well. All-time high peak G at 3154.28 on the 27th of November. I should have written down where it went. It went down to 307033. 3070.33. Oh, I should also mention um, it was really, <clears throat> really nice to see so many people last night. <clears throat> Excuse me. At the... Uh, Investors Business Daily and Boston Investors Group uh, meet up last night. Huh, a lot of food, wow. And uh, just um, best regards from a number of uh, tigers to say, hey, we miss you all from the den. Uh, some people just don't have time. Um, but it was really great to see everyone. So let me just say that um, we have a wonderful following out there uh, for TFNN. And it's really, it's really nice. And there were some new people that hopefully are now listening to the show. Um, we'll see. Hey, hi, welcome. Okay, well, let's get back to the S and P. S and P makes a low of 3070.33. That was just as December was coming in here. Yeah, that was in fact the third uh, of December, and and then it gaps up. 
and it goes all the way to 3150.60. So five-ish points below the all-time high. And now it's kind of failing in the sense that the MACD is very weak. The stochastic is very weak. And what I spent time on last night, and I'm going to do it again, is look at this. We've got the uh, Dow still within this bad news cloud cover. But the, the stochastic, so I keep saying the stochastic, the nine period exponential moving average, the green line, is still slightly above the black 14 period exponential moving average. Hasn't crossed negative yet. It could very well by the end of the day or tomorrow. It could do that, but it hasn't. And I have seen this where you, you go parallel. And you go for a while, and then you break out to the upside, not you. The nine period moving average breaks out, and the price. So I have to be patient and wait for this to break down. We do have a position here um, in the Dow, but I, I need evidence that this is going to really take a tumble. And the tumble says that it probably has to go under 27,680. And here it is, 27,820, 160, 70 points higher. So it's going to be a big dip to do that. So if I look at the S&P using the same um, background, look, this is even it's held even better than the Dow, the nine. But look at these tiny little doji candles. So in a sense, as I spoke last night about this, when I see the doji candles, it just says that momentum slowing when you throw a ball up in the air and it being at MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, I was embarrassed to talk about it. I'm more the artist than the mathematician. Um, but I did mention that gravity goes to 0% when you throw a ball up and as it curves over, it's neither going up or it's going down for one fraction of a second. It is standing still, basically, and then it turns around and comes down. So doji candles say, be careful, we might be standing still. And definitely, if you start to see a trade in the S&P, uh, under 31, we're at 31.34. Start to trade under 31.18. That's a, that's a bit of an issue. Certainly below that, and you're going to get that crossing negative. Look at the QQQ NDX 100 trading vehicle. Another, well, the day's young. It's a doji candle. But this one's also holding very nicely. Ever since it broke out above on the 14th of October, around about the 191 area, this green line has been stupendous, just been a beautiful harbinger of, of upward movement or at least support. And that's where it is now. It's in the support range. And look at the IWM. The IWM is actually a little bit stronger, funnily enough, technically, price-wise, not so much. But look, technically, it's holding even better than all, all, all the others. Now, let's go to this because I wanted to show you gold. Gold has gone from, in the daily chart, from pink, that's negative, to green back in November, just for about four, four sessions, plummets down, and it's still pink. By the end of the day, are we going to see the dollar, DXY, the dollar take a tumble, because it's already in the sell mode in the daily, and the weekly charts, even though I'm calling it a consolidation, monthly chart isn't a PD, but are we going to see some kind of rebound, or all of a sudden, 97.68 on the, on the index uh, gets hit the pink line, and then you suddenly see a break above 97.76, and it starts to try to go green again. I'm not so sure this H pattern says, you got to respect that, and look at the British pound over the coming few days. Where's the British pound waiting for data? Look at that, very strong. I'll be back, Bells of Chapman, Dow's down 60, S&P's up 120, and we've got an hour and what an hour and three quarters to go before the Fed's... If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today.
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. All right, we're back. So what we're looking at is gold is up 7 at 1475. It's stuck in a range. It can go all the way to the 1485, 1490 area, and that's still in the range. But if it starts to trade and hold, I'd say maybe two out of three sessions, consecutive sessions above 1492, that I have to consider as a really strong breakout in the daily, and that'll help. The weekly start instead of the flat stochastic, which is at a 15%, and really just saying, I don't have any strength. There's no momentum here. This is just uh, bounces are going to fail. That stochastic will start to get to 19%, 22%, and that'll be a big change. I still think that gold has a little way to go, but of course, the Fed's going to announcement is going to do quite a, quite a lot. And uh, so keep, keep it in mind, those are the levels to watch. And I'm not sure that gold will break down at this particular point and go underneath the low of 1453 in the continuous contract from the 12th of, of, of November. I think it's a slow press, uh, process of coming down to that level if, if there's no stimulus by the end of the day to really push higher. So that's important. Let me just show you once again that British pound. Look at this. Peak C. I, I, I'm going to... Should I do that? Make this a Chapman Wave um, Phantom Peak C red and then make this D because everything about it is looking... No, I'm going to stay with the C. Peak C in the daily, leg C in the weekly, a fantastic move up. When you consider what it took on the way down, it's taken one, two, three sessions to get, three months to get to this high, and it took one, two, three, four months to get to the low. So it's within that bar. This is really a, a nice V-shaped pattern with the MACD and stochastic in the weekly, but holding very well. And even the monthly MACD is better. Stochastic's still very weak at 47%, but it has improved a lot. So what happens with the currencies going into next week is going to be really important. EUR, USD, let me do this. I've got a couple of questions that I have to answer immediately. You're holding well. But here again, it's just like the gold, it has to get to the 1.1-ish area. It's trading at 1.109, uh, not 1.1, 1.11 area, maybe even 1.12 area to really start to show that it's got the kind of strength that is maybe 
sustainable for a change instead of always failing. And USD JPY should be down, and it is down. Uh, it's at down, down minus 0.07 to 108.66. Uh, made a peak D high. Remember, I'm important. Look at the peak D over there. Look at the peak D over here. Big pullback. Leg D in the weekly could be making a peak D. We'll see what happens on Friday. Um, and I'm just saying that it's stuck in a range. It hit that our target of the 200 period moving average of 109.46. Went a little bit above that, and now it's pulled back. So it's digesting those gains. So crude oil right now, crude oil was down on a last look. It's down huge, down 61. Well, but huge ish. Uh, at 58.63, pulling back from that, that, you remember I drew this in, I said this is going to be like a leg, stalk leg body, you could get the neck, and then you could get the beak as it comes back into the range, so we'll see, does crude oil get back to the 57 level, it's a 58.61, or does it break out to the 60? I think right now, it's more likely to pull back a little bit, there's the, the sideways move in the weekly chart, uh, TLT, let me do this. TLT, I, you know, it's just stuck in a range. The TLT and the TBT, so that's the Lehman 20 year Treasury bond fund, and then the two times short, um, they, they both stuck in a range. And I just think that yields are just at this particular moment sitting in a, a, sitting in a level that says slight bias. Uh, just at the, for, for a little while to the upside. But if this stock market, in other words, if what happens over the next few days, if it's very positive, there's so much resistance of the upside, you can go up. But I suspect that we're really close to bumping to a lot of resistance. Uh, I've shown I'm not going to do it again today. In the Chapman Wave automated resistance levels, on the upside, there's a lot of resistance. That's when you can go, couldn't go 200 points, even 300 points, but that's where you start on the down. That's where you start to get into a really great deal of resistance. That's a big move, but it does say that I think the upside is limited just from the moment I'm saying the downside might be limited in the same way, but not if by Friday's close, and certainly going into Monday, you see a sharp drop, and the Dow is at 27.824 right now. If it starts to drop about 150 points from here over the coming days, and the S&P drops about 15 to 20 points, I think that we could start to see the TLT find money as the volatility, meaning the down move in, in stocks, finds some security in the, uh, in the TLT, the so-called safety of bonds. I've done that now, Mo. Mo is a dividend stock, Altria. I meant to look it up, didn't have time. I can't remember. One of them is more the foods and the other is the tobacco. And I'm looking at this and I'm saying that that's in Leg C Weekly. Um, and yesterday we, I had, uh, there we go. So um, Kevin wants to know about, he's doing an options uh, related trade. It's got dividend coming up. I, I'm looking at this because the more I look at different, different, dividend stocks over a period of six months, the less secure I feel about these dividend stocks. Three months I feel a little bit better, but six, anything can happen with it, like Chevron and all these others. So let me just say, it looks to me like uh, Altria trading at 50.40, up 35 cents. I, I could call this a G slash C. I think it's going to make a nominal new high, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's stuck between the 5250 on the high side, that would break a little bit higher, and it actually holds very well between the 48 and the 46 area on the downside. So I see maybe two-ish points on the upside at this stage, and then I see about three points-ish to the downside stuck in a range. And that'll change if at any point for one whole week, if Altria, Mo is the symbol, starts to trade in the 52.70 area and holds that level as support on a closing basis for two out of three weeks, then I think it's going to try for the 200 period moving average of 55. My eye says it's getting a little bit tired just on the shorter term and it should have some kind of a digestive phase. Next question, I have, wasn't a question, I posed the question. Casey's uh, continuous contract of crude, uh, of coffee. Now, for people who trade, when I'm gonna look at just the continuous contract, they're looking at the different months. There's a whole thing that goes on. I'm just looking at it as a chart formation. It's a spectacular move. Uh, uh, coffee's gone from the 96th level on the continuous contract to the high today of 136. Now, you tell me, 
that on any percentage basis, any chart formation is a spectacular move. So I drew in a rectangle here saying at this doji kind of candle, we know the day's young, anything can happen. But this doji candle says, yeah, you could go a little higher. You could probably go to the 137, 138-ish area. But I wouldn't be surprised if we start a consolidation that it's a really positive chart. So consolidation could take a little bit more time not so much price, and then be stuck between 132 and 126. And that should be a, f a base of support and a little pop-ups to try to make new highs. But mostly it's going to consolidate. That's the way it's looking now. But when it comes to commodities, sometimes the power of the tide is so great because of extraneous conditions, to me at least, but they could be very internal conditions because it could be weather-related, it could be uh, shortages, it could be anything. Um, so I, I'm just saying on a purely chart basis, I think it's ready for some kind of consolidation. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a couple of pops to the upside, but it keeps coming back to keep testing the 129 to 126 area over about two, three weeks. That's kind of my thinking. Um, the next thing we're looking at is, oh, I'll, I'll talk about that in a moment, uh, about gold and South African production. I don't know what's going to happen there. I'll be back. Dow's down 53, S&P's up 1.88. I'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, we're back. So we're looking at, uh, we're done with a coffee. I want you to do, yeah, I had a couple of quick, uh, comments in, in the uh, den. Um, well, one is about the S&P. Could it, could it have a, a tumble because of the Fed today? 
Um, everything about the technicals, if I look at the Magdi and Stochastic, if I didn't, hadn't developed this other way of looking at it, would say to me, um, yeah, this definitely could come back and fill the, at least fill the gap and go to the uh, 31, somewhere around 3120, 3118. Uh, but... If I look at that 9 period moving average, which was so close to turning down and now has drifted up, it's saying there's still internal strength. So it's going to take a move, I can tell you right now, of at least under 31.16 in the S&P to get the uh, 9 period moving average underneath the black um, 14 period moving average. And then I think you're free to say, yes, now we can go at least test the gap. And that gap is just below 31.02 from the fourth, from the spike high, from the day before, uh, turnaround day. So that's the way I'd be looking at it. But at, right at this particular point, it's just saying there's a good cushion in the 31, uh, 30, sorry, 30, yeah, 31, 20, 22, 20 area, just at this particular moment. So that's the way I have to look at it. So it's going to have to be, you need that, let me just do this again, you need that bad news cloud cover. And so far, it's kind of been foggy. It hasn't been really bad, uh, this bad news cloud cover. Look, we're getting closer and closer to turning. Yeah, but it hasn't turned down in the Dow. But there has been a lot of news. Some of it has been potentially bad news, but it hasn't really been bad. That's the reason why I'm looking at this. So the question is, so what, what exactly is going on? Are we, is this strong? Is this weak? Where, where are we here? Um, I always say the SMHs, the semis are really the leaders. They look like they were weakening the other day. I was wrong about that today. They're up 216 and 135.78. It's at, at um, new all-time highs. And that's saying there's some kind of internal strength. Don't ignore that. But I am looking at this particular Dow chart, and I'm saying this is a chart that suggests that at any point pretty soon we should get, in fact, now I'm going to move this on to make it as fair and, and equal to everything else that I've done before because I've chosen the high, not the not in between the rectangle and new high. So I'm making the high of the all-time high of the 27th of November, starting the rectangle, even though we've gone below it, I'm talking about the rectangle remains in place until the nine crosses below the black line. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Puts it in line with the others, which were at 14. Uh, before that was the uh, September one, the July one was 13 before the nine period broke down. And the other one before that, I think was 10. Yep, 10 for the one back in April. Let's just see, you know, it's um, it's a work in progress as everything is in the stock market because nothing is ever exactly the same, even though chart formations never, they always repeat because they're just fractals of human nature and fractals of, of smaller, uh, smaller and bigger chart formations, arches, cups, and straight lines. Uh, there could be, the cup could be a V-shaped pattern, but basically it's the same thing. From one point down, then back to that point, how does it test it? Does it break or does it fail? So that's the that's the question there. So here's, here's something. Um, I was about very close to giving a buy signal for subscribers to my opening call right here at the close on the 2nd of December, I'm looking at this chart and I say, CLF, wow, it's an old, old uh, Cleveland Cliffs. It used to one day, once upon a time, it had a most spectacular move. Look, look at that. It was up in the 90s, way back in 2011. Um, had a little bit of a tumble, went down to, I think it was pennies. Yeah, dollar sixteen in January of 2016, but now it's trading at 8.89 of 34 cents. However, I looked at this and I, I said, oh, I love the, I, I love, I saw it go by on the ticker and I said, oh, haven't looked at CLF for a long time. Uh, Cleveland Cliff Inc. Uh, in the uh, oils, uh, what are they, uh, okay, uh, steel, uh, something like that. Um, anyway, I'm looking at the chart and I said, maybe on a pullback, but it gaps down the next day. One day it's trading at it closes at $8.45 with a high of, no, 8.45 was the high. It closes at 8.41. I'm saying just a little bit of a pullback. Maybe this is going to be good because the weekly is starting to improve. Have a little patience. Next day, I'm looking, 
I didn't do anything. I just stepped back and I said, okay, let's just give it a day because the leg D, anything can happen at a peak D. And boom, it tumbles to $7.08. You know, $8.45 to $7, a dollar. Uh, oh, oops, yeah. That is a huge percentage move. And then it makes a V-shaped recovery and comes back. I saw it here and I thought, okay, that's good. And then someone had mentioned that it was uh, wanting to take over AKS Steel, another one that we've had on and off periodically. Look at AKA Steel. AK Steel is traveling up in the 354 area, up 13 cents a day. This is a screamer. I should have added on my list of screamers. Um, we, I should actually have held it, right, when we had it earlier on. Um, it goes from the 246 level, double bottom, 246, if I remember correctly. Yes, 20, 20, 20th and 21st of November. Starts a brand new move, and it goes peak A, peak B, and it's still in leg C. It's still going to make a D. So, yes, and, and um, it's still creeping up, up, up. Uh, peaky in the densest. I said, no, not creep. Percentage-wise, even today, it's 3.81% on the day. And it, look, it hasn't stopped. So what do you do with stocks like this? There's a particular way that you do it. You either close your eyes and you just buy it at the open, and you put in your stop, and, and then you just don't even look. And you have to have a little room and a little patience. And what happens if you're right? It just goes on green. And it goes on green, keeps doing that until one day it fails. But you do that because the gains allow you to have your stop in with a 1.5%, maybe a 2% risk. But it, it makes 35 or 4% on these big moves every single day. It's a very low price stock, $3.54. But and there's a, you have to be watching it in the sense that that opening price is very important because if it slips on the opening price, um, that can be a problem. See, look, each one of these, the, each one, the wick is being covered, even if it's by a fraction. Look, on the ninth, it closes with a high of 335. It closes at 332. The next day, the low is 333, two pennies lower. So you've got to be able to be, it's a gapped up. So you've got to be prepared for that. But these, these are what I call screamers. S-C-R-E-A-M-E-R-S. -E -E uh, we had one. Uh, well, we've got one that's in play, a BDSI. We've had this for a while, and it just got, makes a stair-step move, and then it just screams to the upside because it's a low-price stock. Well, it went to a peak E doji high, 7.01. We've been taking money off. We have only a little left. And then this morning, out of the blue, it opens lower. It opens at $6.82. And it powers up to $6.88. That's a big move, big percentage move. And now it's come down again. So I'm just watching it. We, 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 we're very light on the stock now because there's a peak E in the weekly chart. It's called a Bio Delivery uh, Service Sciences, uh, 6.34 right now, trading down 11 cents. Um, and these, these, these things can work very nicely. We had another one that was AKBA. The day we didn't have it is the day that it actually had a huge move to the upside yesterday. We've had it a couple of times, and it stopped dead at 6.56. So these little screamers can do, and, you know, they could be nice trading vehicles for the short term. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Dow's down 56, S&P's down one and a half, up one and a half. Be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Uh, yes, I had a question. What is a, uh, a AKBA? What symbol? Uh, it's trading at 629 down 12 cents. It's called a Kabir Therapeutics Inc. And it's kidney diseases. That's their, uh, their specialty. And if it makes it, if it can go one penny above six dollars and fifty six cents, it's peak B in the daily, peak A in the weekly. It goes to leg B in the in the weekly, leg C in the daily, and it starts a new, brand new leg A in the monthly chart with the technicals for the first time collaborating with the shorter term daily and weekly to say, yep, we're not turning up. And it means that maybe you finally got a basis that's doubled from 299 low on the week of the 15th of November to in two weeks, it goes from the, from about three to 656. So I wouldn't be surprised if this rectangle lasts a little longer, but I wouldn't also be surprised if it sneaks a little bit higher, then pulls back. But just keep it on your list. It's 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 uh, yeah, it's it's doing the right thing at this particular point. We, we're trying to get these uh, things for the for the big intraday move, and then you just raise your stop. You can get out of position, off of position, and and it's it's kind of fun to do as it works out. And you must put in a really tight stop because they're either going to work beautifully. But you just want to be out, so like a like a one percent or one and a half percent out. So let's go do a couple of things here. Um, so you know, that whole thing with um, CLF is CLF, I believe, is a, a wanting to take over AK Steel. So that's and to, for them both to be moving up like this, it's a very good reception to it. The SLX is acting much much better now. Um, SLX is the Vector Fan Ec Vector Steel ETF. A lot of these charts, a lot of commodity charts, the monthly charts is actually starting to perk up a little bit. So what the Fed says, how the market reacts, how the commodities react, how the dollar, the euro, the um, uh, gold, um, silver I had mentioned yesterday, and actually in, uh, a lot of people asked me about silver last night. I I can see it bouncing, but so far it's really not a great looking chart. It looks like it's just stuck in a range at 16.83, up a little bit, up 13 cents. If silver can start to trade, I made this very clear, in the 17.58 to 17.63 area, just out there, just to get, get gets out of the uh, uh, the 16s and into the low 17s and then turns the low 17s into a base, that's where you can see the first decent move in a long time since the September high of 19.75. Um, that's the first time you'll see some strength return, and that makes the 17.64 um, weekly 
200 period moving average, this orange line right here, as a magnet. That, that, then it'll be a magnet. Right now, it's nothing. It's a repellent, if anything. Okay, so uh, I think I've covered a chunk of the questions, and more, more likely is um, the aspects that I want you to talk about. This is amazing. Look at this. Costco made a high at 307.10. Well, that 307.10 uh, in November had a high of 307.34 in September and it dropped sharply to the 280s. And I made a note of how remarkable it is that we've seen so many of these V-shaped recoveries in many stocks. I haven't seen it in this many stocks with this kind of with time, a time delay going back. And what I wanted to mention here, look at this. Look at this stock. MRK Merck it has a, had a high, what's the high today? 89.49. Well, let me squeeze this and you'll see something absolutely fascinating. Merck, all time high was in 2000, in November of 2000, it went to 91.50. It dropped down to the 20 level and now it's right back in this beautiful cup formation. Let me just draw this in so you can see it. Look at this cup. Yes, the fulcrum, the, the low point is not in the middle. It's a little later on. It's a particular candle that I like to use. But look at this. It says that by January, and there's the Chapman Wave inside wedge target uh, resistance line, and that said that it should take until, until January. This green line is suggesting that there could be a rally that takes it to 91.50, but it's gotten ready to the high of 90, uh, 89.53. 89.53. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? Look at that beautiful cup formation. Look at Microsoft did the same thing, except for one little aspect, uh, MSFT. Microsoft did that back at 53.97. I think that's with splits and all, but 53.97 way back in, I think it was January of 2000 pulls back a little bit down to 14.87. And then it had a right side move that I took from there to there, and it did it, and it touched 56.80, I think it was. So it went a little bit above. And then it went three times higher to the most recent high. It's down at nine cents today. But look at this. And talk about re remanufacturing, re reformulating, reconfiguring. Look what they did. They changed their stripes completely. Now it's an incredible company. And last month it had a high of 152.50. So far it hasn't taken that out. I just wanted to show that. Oh, there's another one as well. Um, let me show you right here. And this is one. Crisp. I'm always fascinated when I see the name go by. I, just, I never remember what they do. Had a 73.90 all-time high in May of 2019, plummets to 22. I Tell me that's not a drop. And lo and behold, it makes a high of 74 round number for November and so far in December. Isn't that incredible? And it's look, it's distanced. It's not like it was two days in a row. Isn't that interesting? And look, it stopped there. It looks like that chart I just showed you now of AKBA, uh, which had this little double top. So. I'm just fascinated. Look at this. You've got September of what did I say it was? This is goes to May of 2018. How does it know to get back to the exact price? And now it's stalling. It's making this arch formation. So we're going to see. So we got the Fed coming up in about an hour and 10 minutes. What very often happens is regardless of how high or how low it goes, by the time you get to 12.30, 12.45, the prices start to narrow. The S&P has a fairly narrow range. The Dow comes, if it was down, it comes back. If it was up, it comes back down again. And they sort of stall waiting for that news. Bam, the news comes out and you get your reaction. And as far as the reaction is concerned, <clears throat> yeah, you might have to wait for Powell. And I suspect that Powell is going to show his independence in words, in deeds, the Fed's feeding the, the whole bull market. That's what it's all about. But in words, I think he's going to do, he's going to talk about independence. 
and it's going to kind of hint that there have been some very good uh, reports kind of that have been in, in, coming up over this earnings season, and that he respects them, and he's going to be following them closely because if that kind of strength is maintained, then he might not have to lower rates for a while. Something, whatever it is that he says, and if he says something like that, that might be a negative for the market. And if he, whatever it is, if it's interpreted positively uh, by 2:45. 30 minutes after the, the beige book is out, um, the market could be up uh, 80 or 90 or 100 points. And if it's not so good, you could be down about 80 or 90. But I'm suspecting that the market is trying to hold off until Monday when you get all the news that's, that's fit to print coming out and then we are fresh for the December, end of the year, whatever's going to be. Dow's down 41, S&P's up 2. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Agri Conditions Hour. One segment coming up. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. So uh, if you look at the dreaded H pattern, the lowercase h, this arch formation in corn, I was asked about it. And another person asking me has had really great success in actually buying with really close to lows, uh, um, taking taking on the, that risk because they've done the assessment. But it's a 371 and a three quarters in the continuous contract, which must be fairly close to the price. But the low that was made the week of the 7th, 13th of September of 363, I would have to wait and I would much rather be buying a turnaround Maybe you, you'll get it with with um, uh, with the tariffs or whatever it is that's coming up, but I would rather be buying some strength. Now, if you want risk reward, 
I don't I don't know your percentage uh, that you know your stop, but I would get as close to 363 as possible because that it has one week. If it breaks that, it has one bar in which or two bars at maximum to turn around and close above it. So I get as close to 365, 363, and I'd have I'd have my finger on the trigger. And as there's a V-shaped pattern. I'd buy that, I'd buy that turnaround and say, okay, now you've got to go back. And at this time, in the very short term, you've got to get back to the uh, low of the 27th, which was uh, 370, 373. So it's, it's, wow, this is that dreaded H, uh, sorry, this is the Eiffel Tower. Look at the month, monthly. It goes straight up, makes a peak A minus. The A pattern is where you go straight up and straight down like the Eiffel Tower. I call it the Eiffel Tower and it broke to a lower low. I'd be real cool. I don't know what's going on with corn, but uh, it's dangerous. That's all. I'd, much, I'd, I'd, I'd wait to buy a little strength. So, folks, we're another hour, just over an hour, and you get the Fed. Uh, just watch this real closely. In fact, you can use the VIX index. Uh, just It's not a pop-up. You want to see a close. If the VIX is trading at 15.78, closes above 16.35, 16.50. In other words, it takes the news and it's not, it doesn't take it well. And VIX is starting to move up and the Dow is now down maybe 75 points. S&P is down maybe seven or eight points. Then I think we get a bad close and a lousy uh, Thursday. But you've got to be careful because if it's the opposite and the VIX at 15.77 slides under 15.30 and the Dow's up about 80, S&P's up about 9 or 10, that means this should be a good close. This is a, this is a, the next few days are very important. I'll be back tomorrow at 8 a.m. Uh, to do my show. It'll be pre-recorded. So have a wonderful day. Check out my opening call. Check out the Tiger.